patients suffering from otherwise incurable and incapacitating epileptic seizures are often helped if the connection between the two cerebral hemispheres is cut. The two halves of the brain are mirror images of each other, connected by the corpus callosum, a bundle of about 200 million nerve fibers carrying information to and from each side of the brain. When it's severed, the brain's electrical impulses that cause epileptic seizures are blocked from spreading. In a sense, the brain is divided already. The nervous system is wired so that incoming sensory impulses from our vision or our sense of touch are routed to the opposite side of the brain. So what's seen by the right eye or touched by the right hand is routed to the left hemisphere of the brain, while the right hemisphere picks up signals from the left eye and left hand. Normally, this information is then shared by both sides of the brain via the corpus callosum. But when it's cut, all that changes. A further complication of the split brain phenomenon is the fact that each side of the brain is better at some tasks. The right side of the brain is thought to be better at perceptual problems, pattern recognition, and spatial relationships, while the left side seems to be better at language, analysis, and creating explanations. Michael Gazaniga is conducting research at the Dartmouth Medical School, where he specializes in the psychological study of split-brain patients. What we've learned in looking at these patients is that there needs to be a final common path, a cognitive system that unites and pulls together all the behaviors that come pouring out of us, whether they're actual behaviors or whether they're changes in our moods and what have you. We need a system that, that, that allows for integrating this and interpreting it into some kind of continuous story about who we are and what we are and where we're going and what, where we've been. And uh, studying the neuropsychological patient, the broken brain, as it were, as we say, uh, allows you this, this insight. It shows you that the brain is organized in terms of many modules, many sub-processes. These separate modules can all create real behaviors. They can create changes in mood. Uh, but you certainly don't want a system that has all of these modules running off behaviors with no integration. There's got to be something that pulls all of this together into a theory, a theory of who we are and where we are in relationship to the world. And uh, the, the neuropsychological data from both split brain patients and other focal disease patients suggests that there's something in the left hemisphere that we've called the interpreter that, that performs this integration, this crucial link uh, uh, for, the hum for human consciousness. The notion here is that the, the interpreter turns out to be the essential uh, feature of the human brain that allows for this individual stamp, as it were, on our lives, because it is pulling together our own personal events, our own personal responses to the environment, and giving them an interpretation. And that is going to be the system that's going to be responsible for our unique view and our unique sense of self uh, that we all, we all think we possess.